This was advertised on eBay as a Triang Jinty, and it certainly is. And I thought, yeah, I like that. I've done a few Triang Jinties. Um, so I bid for it. I got it very cheaply. And when it arrived, I soon found out why. It's not double O gauge, because that's double O gauge, and it's not N gauge, like this one. It is, of course, halfway in between. It's what try and call tabletop gauge or TT. Where do I start? I don't have a 3mm rolling road um, and all I've got is some track so uh, first thing I think I'll do is I'll take my power clip I'm going to apply about 6 volts and see what happens when I um, apply power to the pickups the pickups here not making contact with this wheel only this one so I'm going to use this to see if anything happens. And not really a lot happening. I reverse the voltage. Drawing current but not getting there. Alright, so I'm just going to try and remove the body case. I notice that there is a chimney screw. So I think we'll take that off first. And here we go. Counter some chimney screw. Rid off what we're we going to find. Yeah. According to the seller, this had been in an attic for a while. Um, so obviously not been used. Maybe very similar to the double O gauge triangle with the contacts and the brushes. So let's see if we can get anything from this end. Still nothing happened there. Now the motor may have gone, we don't know. Oh! There's a kick. You see that? Yeah. So there is life in the motor. I think what I'll do at this stage is just simply strip the motor and mechanism down and give it a good clean and lubrication and see how it goes from there. So let me get back to you on that one. Let's go on a voyage of discovery together. I'm going to remove the remnants of the base plate. I think this will be a job for my 3D printer. Yes, I think so. Uh, covers over there, there's a contact to the motor. This will just be the base plate retaining screw. I have no idea spares are available to this. Right, so what happens now? This contact spring which fits behind the drive wheels at the front and rear. And now I can get my tweezers which should have been ready. 
This is an insulating plate, probably from mica or something. From mica, not for mica. And I think I might need to undo that first in order to get it out, which is this wire here. Uh -huh. And the, the undercarriage seems to remove, yeah, it's still held on with this wire, okay. I think I will remove it from this end. Sorry, I'm not watching my monitor, if you missed any of that, I do apologise. Then my aim is to remove this. I think the world is extract. Extract this. And just hopefully I'll be able to feed this back through again. Yeah? Okay, I'm sure we will. And here's the undercarriage coming. And there's the dry screw. You can put the gun stop. When I apply my clips to the brush heads here, or the brush arms here, I sometimes get a little kick. But, oh, try, to try again. But if I try and put the bridge across here, it's very reluctant to move, so I'm going to move this spring, clean it all up, see if the contacts are okay. I took the brushes out, cleaned the armature, checked the little gaps between the pieces. Uh, it's commutator, I do apologise, the armature's a coil. Um, cleaned the brushes up, I don't have replacement brushes, um, and now I lubrication at the end bearing and in the reservoir washer at the other end and now let's see what we get and Eureka isn't that something to behold 60 year old going like a good one so, maybe we'll get some life back in this little TT trying. Trying. So, obviously, I have to repair this base plate that holds the contact spring on. Um, so, that will take a few days of designing it and uh, printing it out. So, I shall be back as soon as I can with that. Meantime, I shall concentrate on just cleaning this down, oh, there's a lot of friction here, so strip this down, clean it out, check everything, they look okay apart from age, no real damage I can see, a couple of screws holding the coin rod, so that's easy enough to dismantle, pins into the driving wheels at the front and the rear, and they should basically self-quarter when it's all assembled. Well, would you believe, a few days ago on eBay, I saw another T90. Looking pretty rough condition. Picked up this very cheaply as well. And I've actually taken the bottom base plate off which in this case is complete and that's it there but it's got a few cracks and you see this pillar here oh wrong one this pillar here sorry and it's missing here so this has obviously been broken well I did get my 3D printer working and I've come up with this um, after a bit of a experimentation I've just got one other little thing to do, and that is to prepare um, a location hole for the pickup cable. 
But other than that, I don't think they're too far apart. So I need to see, uh, this is the location I was telling you about, it should actually be in, where is it going to be? Oh, I had it right, yeah, there it is. So this location hole here is for the solder part of the wire. You see it there on the spring, so it can just sit nicely in there. So that's the only thing I need to do to finish this off. The holes for the screws are slightly thin, so I'll probably just try and drill them out with a 2mm drill. But that's that. So I've got two of these ready, one for each machine as it happens. A little reminder, this is the one I got originally. And to be honest, I've actually been away for two weeks on holiday and come back. Um, and just to remind you that, or remind me, that when I apply power to the brushes, the motor does in fact run pretty well. So this new one, I haven't done much testing to it. I just took the base plate off to get a template. And if I apply power here, it does try and work. You can see that, but quite reluctant. So obviously it needs a bit of a service. So I'm going to uh, service the motor, clean the armature, lubrication, check the brushes, check the contacts, and then I'll have two sets of undercarriage and I'll get those to strip down and lubricate and rebuild. This is the drive assembly for the original T90 and it's quite a simple arrangement. A screw in the centre drive wheel holds the con rods on. So I'm just going to try and remove this. Maybe need a finer screwdriver. Try this from here. There we go. And the con rod comes out. The pins hold it onto the other wheels. Wheels come out. You need a good clean. Front and rear. And then the same for this one here. There we go. So, nicely clean, we've got lubrication, I put it all together and that should be ready to fit back onto the machine and I will do the same with uh, my machine number two. I've cleaned the wheels, the axles, i scrubbed the rims with a combination of uh, Brasso and White Spirits and I think they've come up pretty well, give them a rub down with my fibre brush. Uh, and I've got a little fibre stuck in my finger somewhere, very annoying to have to get out. Anyway, um, now to just put it all back again. So I'm just going to take a little bit of oil, because I'm having this well here, and just apply it to the front and the rear driving wheels. Okay. And as long as I put, um, well, I can worry about the orientation later on. I notice that these corn rods don't have the little pip that the later trying double O gauge had that simulated an oil reservoir. So, uh, oops, I should have put it into the centre wheel first of all. Okay, so let me correct that. We'll put this into here first, fitting the screw through the corn rod, corn rod. then I can put the wheel onto the screw and simply tighten it up, basically tighten as much as I like because there's a little collar on the screw to prevent binding. 
and similarly with the other side. Here we go. Now to fit the wheels. One in there. One in there. And the final one should provide all the tension that we need. And they should basically self quarter. That one in there, and this one should go into there. And I'll just bring this one round about there. And in there, I think maybe one. Yep, there we go. And that's. That's okay there, just check. I want yeah. Yeah. And once we put that into the locomotive, it will uh, line itself up. So now I've got one set done, I'm going to do the same with the second this set. This is what I need to do. I still need to clean and lubricate the uh, motor, the armature, the commutator and the oil reservoirs in here. The contacts uh, through the motor, these brushes held on by a little um, spring, so the brushes should come out easily enough. And this side has got an insulated sleeve So this would be the positive pole, and those are the brushes, and this is the insulated sleeve, and can you see this shape of the brush that provides power to the negative pole and support basically for the positive pole because this is connected to the locomotive chassis. And here is a reservoir washer. It's a sort of felt washer. So it's a case of dropping some oil into there and allow that to soak. It becomes a reservoir. Um, I don't know when it was last lubricated. Probably sometime in the 50s, 60s. Looking at the commutator, you can see it's quite discoloured. And there is a bearing in there. So I'm just going to try and drop a few drops of oil onto the spindle and hopefully that will work its way into the bearing. Underneath you can see the worm screw with a second bearing here. So, a bit of oil onto the spindle. And also I'm going to run it along the worm gear so that as it works it will feed itself into the drive mechanism as well. I'm sure that's going to help a lot. Now I need to try and clean the commutator brushes. So I have some white spirit. And the cotton bud. And I'll just let that run through very gently. And that's that's two tons and look at the colour of that. Sixty years of work. This is if you if you know sorry, I'll try that one again. If you're familiar with the X03, X04 motor from Triang, then this is very similar. And just like the X04, uh, the commutator has little grooves, so 
I'm sorry, just getting something. I'm just going to take a needle and once I find it and very carefully I'm just going to take my needle and try and remove any built up carbon in this gap. And although it doesn't look much to you and me, to a little motor like this, it could be quite a significant decrease in performance. And there are three gaps, because it's a three-pole motor. So there's the third one. Although I saw a bit of life in it earlier on, I'm actually going to take my multimeter and check the continuity of the windings. So with my meter on a low ohms range and the gap sitting up the way, I can apply my meter across that gap and you can see I'm getting about 8 ohms. Turn the armature, try again. The armature round one slot, and again I'm getting the same reading, and once more, oops, and I'm getting the same reading, just over 8 ohms. The fact that all three sets of readings are the same means that the coils are all reading the same. And therefore, it's fine. So cheers. These are the motor brushes, carbon heads and brass arms. And they are not looking too bad, sorry about that, not looking too bad for their age. Which is just as well because I don't have any replacements for these. So I'm just going to give them a little clean. Just a little rub with some white spirit. We don't think we'll see a big difference, but any, you can see how much has come off. So we'll just do this, this, the second brush, and you see all the carbon guns have been built up. So now I'm going to put the brushes so I can the motor bearings lubricated. A uh, worm screw lubricated, brushes cleaned, reassembled, and so if I apply power across this capacitor, then it should work. And there you see, and that's the same voltage that I applied the very first time when I tested it. And I think you can see, if you remember, that it's actually going much better than it did previously. Look at that. So, this looks as if this is now working as well as the other one, the first one. So this is the first one with the orange lead. This is the second one with the red lead. So now I need to assemble the pickup plate, which is in now, two halves. I have the wheels in place. This wire has to fit through there. And should appear about there. It has come out. You can see, yep, that's there. So I'm going to try and lower this onto there, get the contact springs behind the wheels, there and there, 
and I have to be careful um, I can see there's a spring part there that has to be seated into the groove in there and then screws in here and here to hold it all together I've now fitted the base plate embedded the spring it's making contact front and back all I have to do now is remake this connection onto the suppressor capacitor so let's see if that helps get some solder bit of tinning here and here whoops This is going to be the moment of truth. Something not quite right. Definitely trying to work. There, look at that. I wonder when that last moved. So I just need to find out why it's not working here. This is a positive pickup here. Ah, yep, yep, yep. And just definitely trying to engage here. Okay, nothing to worry about. It turns out that when I re-soldered these connections here this orange lead had actually come adrift so now when I apply power you can see it's now running oh look at that look at that oh am I pleased I'm just going to turn the power down a little bit and just see how much I can take it in. I've got 4 volts and it's starting to work there from 4 volts through the rather poor connection there. Now, of course, I don't have a rolling road, so I'm going to get a piece of track that I got with the locomotive and see if that works. Right, so power points on here, and you can see you can see the motor trying to work. I will turn up the voltage a little bit, and there we go. Reverse the connections, and there she goes. We've got a working T90, people. We've got a working T90. The rails are probably needing a bit of a clean. Come on. But it's definitely there. Doing something that it didn't do before. There we go. Yep, I think the rails are needing clean. Okay, quite simply. No, they look really, really gun stuck through the rails. I'm going to try it this time. Oh, 
Oh yes, we've got a working T90. So I'm now going to do the same with the second chassis and we'll try and get those up ready and running to together. The second locomotive. So the set of drive wheels, making sure that the insulated uh, wheels are towards me. So just checking for the bushes. There they're there. They fit in. And when they sit into the sockets, they line up and are perfectly quartered. I've assembled the base plate and the retaining plate and the contact springs are now visible and they are sitting in the groove held together, they clip together pretty well. I feed the wire through here and it should appear at the egress and there it is allowing this assembly to sit here making sure that the springs fit behind the wheels at the front and the rear. I'm just going to bend this over to save it getting pushed back out again. And now I can take the screws. I found a pair of black headed screws to match surroundings. And there and in here. Make them just tight enough. I've repaired a crack in this plate here, so hopefully that should be okay. Quick check in the mechanism before I wire it up to make sure that it works okay. And that looks pretty good. So, hopefully if I connect this onto the capacitor, we should have a working T90. Second working T90. So, a bit of solder. Bit tinning there, bit of tinning in here, and this should sit nicely in there. Quick look, looks okay. And now, now. A moment of truth. And we'll just give it a little bit more. I think this has come loose. That's okay there. Oh yeah, I think it's shorting out on the screw. That works there. And it works there. Mm -hmm. So, let me just take the cradle out of the way. There's a piece of track. And let's see what happens now. Just the voltage. Oh, we need to short. And let's see. And there we go. Two. Triang TT gauge, whoops, something stuck in the magnet, T90s. Now, I don't have a rolling road, in fact I don't even have any test track, but I was given some um, track with this locomotive here, whoops, 
So I'm going to set up a little te a little run and see if it will go for any length of time. I've cobbled together a few pieces of the track that came with the locomotive. Um, it was in pretty poor state and a lot of the fish plates are broken but I've managed to get a little bit of a length here. So there's my two locomotives there. I've hooked up some power, so let's see what happens. There we go. Up there, around there, bring it to halt there. And that's a pretty bad bit of track, so we'll just get it moving. What during rehearsals? There we go, and back it comes. So let me just take this locomotive away and put on the second one, and we'll give that the same test. Bringing it forward, up, down the first, and stop, into the verse. And certainly seem to be running okay. I'm quite pleased that they've turned out this way. And uh, it's certainly running, which is what I intend to like doing. So I'll just put the first one back on again. And the track is in quite poor condition. Um, very hard to get lens to actually work. Uh, I need to reverse. There we go, this thing wants to win. I'm I back. This is a good point to end uh, part one of my TT restoration. Started off with a Jinty, which I thought was double O, turned out to be TT. And then I received a second one with no body shell. Um, so I've got one body shell. Um, what I can do with the other one, I'm not really sure. But this one here, the body shell's in good condition, but the decals are obviously needing a ten tension. So I'm going to try and find some decals, clean up the body shell, I've also got another major problem with these, and that is the couplers. They are tension lock couplers, like double O gauge, uh, but as you can maybe see from here, the hook part has broken off at both ends, and here in fact the whole hook has come away. I do have one spare. Uh, so I think I'll fit this to one of these chassis. But as for the others, I'm not sure where I'm going to find replacement couplers. So I think I might just either compromise with something else, or maybe try and develop something um, to work with the small amount of wagons I've got. Anyway, that's for part two. So at the moment, I'm just going to say thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry to get these into shot again. Hope you liked that. And uh, stay tuned because I'm sure there's going to be a part two coming up sometime. Um, and we'll see how far I can get with TT Triangente. Take care everybody. Bye for now. Keep watching YouTube.